Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, my name is Sue Willard. I am one of the admissions counselors here at HWS. Um, and let me just say congratulations to all of you on your admittance. Um, it's I know been a long arduous process. It has definitely not been made e any easier um, with all the, the COVID issues that have been happening, but hopefully all of you and your families are, are well. Um, this obviously is the financial aid information session. And I'm joined by my colleague, Beth Nepa, who is the director of financial aid here, and she's gonna kick it off in a, in a minute. Um, but just to let everyone know, we are recording this session. So families that aren't able to join us um, are able to uh, view the session uh, later on when we post it to our admitted student page. And we're actually posting all virtual information sessions to our admitted student page. So uh, feel free to, to look there if you've missed any and, and want to view them afterwards. Um, but if you all could keep your microphone muted, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and also uh, throughout the course of this conversation, uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat or at the end of uh, Beth's uh, session. She's happy to answer those if you'd like to um, unmute and ask them. Um, if you have specific questions about your financial aid package, I'm going to put in the chat right now a link to our um, finance, specific financial aid page for admitted students. Um, and you can sign up for a time to speak directly to one of our admissions or financial aid colleagues um, about your package. But without further ado, uh, Beth, why don't you take it away? And, and uh, we're happy to have all of you join us today. Thank you, Sue. And again, just want to reiterate, congratulations on your acceptance to Hobart and William Smith Colleges. Not only um, have I been at the colleges for the past 16 years, um, I also have a daughter who just graduated in 2020. And uh, it's funny because she said, I will not, I'm not even looking at Hobart and William Smith mom because I know it like the back of my hand because it's in our backyard. And, but then she actually started working for the admissions office and got a, the real lowdown on what HWS is all about. Um, in her four years ended up traveling to uh, Africa and um, she was in Thailand and she was in Vietnam and she just, uh, anyway, made the best of it, had the best time of her life, changed her, I can't even tell you um, how much she's changed. And uh, the accolades go to HWS, um, just an amazing. So not only am I an administrator, I'm a parent, uh, a very proud parent um, of a very happy girl. So if, you're, if your girls are happy and your boys are happy, then you're happy. <laughs> so. Um, so that's my background. Again, I've been here at the colleges for the past 16 years um, and had never been to the Finger Lakes region until I actually applied for the position and would love at first sight. Uh, cannot believe what the Finger Lakes have to offer. And I'm still learning more things about the Finger Lakes because it's just, it's so, so incredible. So I'm gonna to talk tonight about the financial aid packages that you've received in general. Um, but like Sue said, if you have any questions pertaining to your package specifically, if you have questions about why you received this and what are the next steps and things like that, you really should sign up for one of our one-on-one -on -one conversations that's in the portal that, that Sue has attached to this meeting. So when it comes to the aid packages that you've received, there are a couple of different portions. Some have merit aid, and that obviously is gift aid based on your student's academic um, progress and academic portfolio through high school. So merit is again, gift aid. You don't have to apply for it every year. It's just gonna show up on your financial aid package every year. If you have an HWS grant, that's different. That's based on need. That's based on the financial aid forms that you completed. And that we do look at every single year. As you fill out the FAFSA again, we no longer require the CSS profile. You only fill it out once coming into your first year. So from here on out, it's just the FAFSA form. 
which if you can all remember, it's the easier form. So you just complete the FAFSA form. We will look at your need. And as long as your financial need remains pretty close, you know, pretty similar, you can count on that HWS grants every year as well. The other portion of the aid package includes federal aid if you're eligible and that we do not determine. That's based on your FAFSA form. That could be the Pell Grants, the SEOG Grants, and then your federal student loans. Again, that's based on the FAFSA form. We do not determine those amounts. The self-help portion of your aid package is work study and the student loans. When you think about it, you have to do something for those two resources. For student loans, they have to be repaid. For work study, you have to work on campus or through one of our programs. The student gets a paycheck every two weeks based on the hours that they put in the two weeks prior, they can either turn that around and put that against the tuition that they owe or the balance that they owe, or they can keep it in their pocket for Friday night pizza money. And that's exactly what I did because I did not want to be nickeled and dimed. You know, hey, mom, we're going out. Um, I need money for this, I need money for that. No, you get a job on campus and that's your spending money. So again, that federal work study, those dollars do not automatically go against your bill. It's something that your student decides if they wanna work or not. And if they do work, they'll get a paycheck every two weeks that they can either turn around again, put it toward their bill, or they can just receive that check in their campus mailbox or direct deposit to an account that they specify and have that spending money. A lot of times at this point, I get the question from families, well, what, how do I pay the balance? You know, we have a balance here that has to be, you know, that's, that's going to be due. How do we close that? Well, we are so fortunate. We do have an interest-free payment plan up to 12 months that you can take advantage of. It costs every year, I wanna say, it's either 45 or $50 just to enroll. And then you just make interest-free payment plans that come directly out of, a, out of an account that you tell us, just like a car payment, um, any kind of finance payment. We just pull it. it it's pulled out of your account. Um, and again, it's up to 12 months. A lot of our families use that, but also a lot of our families use that in conjunction with the federal parent loan. The federal parent loan is again, through the federal government, very low interest rates, fixed interest rates. So it's not variable, it is fixed. And between that parent loan and the interest-free payment plan, that's what a lot of our families do. Now that federal parent loan, you should know, you can defer your payment for the four years that your child is in school, which is a great benefit. Um, so again, those are, and that this is all on our website, but again, um, and if you have further questions, please reach out to us and we'll give you any, any information that you need. The cost typically does increase um, each year around about 3%. Well, when you think about the aid package, your, your, your gift aid will not increase based on our cost of, um, the cost of the billing increase, it will not. But for first year students, if you have financial aid, a full financial aid package and you have student loans, the student loans for first years is a maximum of $5,500. Well, for sophomores, it's $6,500. And then for juniors and seniors, it's $7,500. So 
that helps with the increase um, of, of our cost. Um, so I just wanted to, to make sure that, that you knew that. And this is the point in time when you want to encourage your students, go out there and seek those outside scholarship opportunities. We are a school that if your son or daughter brings with them money from the community and it, whether it's, it doesn't matter where it's coming from, a church, um, the Lions Club, wherever it's coming from, we are going to allow you to, to reap the benefit of every single dollar that you bring in. It's, go, it's going to go against your family contribution. We are not gonna take any of it away. There are a lot of schools, they will calculate how much you're bringing in and they'll reduce your gift aid that they're giving you because you're bringing in this extra money. We do not do that. So I encourage you, there is a great program um, that your children can look at right now. And when I do financial aid nights, I always recommend this to families because it's nationwide. It's called Dollars for Scholars and it's through um, Scholarship America. We are a matching partner. So if you still show financial need left in your financial aid package and your son or daughter brings in with them, they get this, uh, dollars for scholars and they bring in, let's say they're awarded $1,500 and you still have unmet need. We're going to match that amount up to what that unmet financial need is. I cannot tell you since I've been talking about it now for the past 10 years, how many checks come across my desk from um, the Scholarship America being a matching partner. It's just something to look into, okay? So that's a great one. All of your community organizations, you don't have to belong to them, mom and dad, for your kids to apply. The Elks Club, American Legion, um, Knights of Columbus, Lions Club, they all have money to give to kids for education. You know, sometimes it's $500, but you know what? $500 is a semester worth of books. So every little bit counts. So have your children do the homework and seek these outside awards. The obvious avenue also is through their guidance counselor office. The guidance counselors know of local community organizations um, and, and scholarships within the high school itself. So they should be checking with their high school guidance counselors at this point too. The deadlines are typically around um, May 1st. So they have a lot of time to still get this done. And again, um, we have so many kids bringing in so much outside money and it's awesome because again, we do not penalize you for that. So it's just helping you. And the last thing I wanna talk about before we open it up for questions is things have changed dramatically, right? In the past year. Um, and so we do have a financial aid appeal process that if there's something that you wanna tell us uh, that we don't already know, based on your financial aid application and your admissions application. We invite you to complete our online appeals process, uh, which can be found on our website under the financial aid tab. And it's under the loan and resource center. As soon as you type in exactly what we're asking for and hit submit, we receive it so it's instant. Um, we will review it. Not there's, you know, sometimes we can't assist anymore, but sometimes we can, depending on what your, your circumstances are. So 
take a look at that. Um, if that's something that you're interested in doing, if there's something that you need to tell us that we don't already know. Uh, and I think, well, I was going to talk to you about the link, but Sue already posted it. Sue, is there anything in the chat that we want to? Here's one. If a student, so there is there is one question. Um, the yeah. one came in. We have another question after that. Um, if a student finds they don't have enough time to study and work, can they stop working? So, can you just uh, explain to families if it's required for students to work if they're awarded work study or if that's their choice? Thank you. Great question. No, it is not. As a matter of fact, I see in first years a lot of times where the parents say, you know what, if you really need pizza money, let me know. Don't work. We want you to get adjusted to college life. We want you to, you know, feel out your classes and see what the rigor is going to be like instead of stressing out and having that work opportunity as well. We're not going to, you know, we're, we have a lot of students that at first say no, but then they come back and say, you know what, I feel like I'm really in a good place and I can work. And then we say, go for it. We're still, you still have that option. We're not going to take it away from you, but it's not mandatory. And if you do the math on the 2000 work study per year, it basically uh, comes out to about six hours a week that a student will work um, during the academic year to uh, receive the 2000 in, in work study. Um, but the next question is, if a student is to receive a merit scholarship with their package, is that included for every year? And obviously, um, what parameters uh, do students have to abide by to retain those scholarships? Another good question. Merit scholarships are there for four years. Uh, the only the stipulation that we have for merit scholarships is that you have to maintain satis satisfactory academic progress. Um, that does mean that within, uh, you have to make progress towards your, uh, degree towards your 32 credits, but you also, after your second year have to have a 2.0 or better. So that's the only thing that you have to be concerned of is satisfactory academic progress. We actually have evolved that too. So it's now a 3.0. Um, however, um, just, you know, obviously everyone's worried, you know, you come into college for the first time and you don't know how, how are things going to go that first semester? If I don't do well, is my scholarship going to be removed? And, and that's not the case. I think we're a pretty empathetic uh, school and we understand that sometimes you can have semesters where there's just a few bumps. Um, so we'll work with families. Um, but in general, uh, it's obviously, it's a 3.0 in academic, solid academic progress, as Beth was alluding to. But then we do have certain um, specific scholarships, whether it's a civic engagement scholarship, we want you to be involved in community service. Uh, if it's a leadership scholarship, we'd love you to be involved with the HWS LEADS program. Um, so for some of the specific uh, you know, scholarships, we do have those parameters, but um, in general, it's a 3.0 um, you know, academic progress towards graduation. Um, the next thing is, um, what if another student who will attend college in another year how does that affect merit aid? So the question of if there's an older sibling that's going to be graduating college while that student's in college, or if there's another sibling that will be attending college um, at some point. Well, it's not going to affect merit aid at all. Merit aid is definitely based on the academic portfolio through high school. It does um, weigh in on need-based aid. So when it comes to the FAFSA form, if you all of a sudden have one more in school, it's going to benefit you. Um, your students, as long as your financials are this pretty similar, um, it's going to benefit you because the expected family contribution is gonna change drastically. So we do look at that and there are a, a lot of times we're able to add gift aid onto the student's package when another one comes to school. When another, But looking at it the other way, if there are, more than one in school right now, and you have a need-based grant, and all of a sudden that student, uh, there's another student in your family that graduates, um, and so now if there's one less in school, that too has a direct effect on your um, expected family contribution, and there's times, not as many as our increase, where we have to decrease a little bit your HWS grant, but what we really do pride ourselves on is that we we really want you 
coming out of the gate for four years to be able to project what it's going to cost you for your child to go to school. So we really do, um, we listen to you and we, our number one thing that we have to be is equitable. So, uh, but again, you know, we will listen to you and take any special circumstances into consideration. When I say we reduce the grant, it's not by much. Um, so again, it's case by case basis. Um, and I have to say, Beth, I have to stand corrected. Um, uh, we have uh, adjusted the scholarship to maintain scholarships to exactly what you were saying. So 2.0 and academic progress to graduation. So I did misspeak uh, when I said uh, 3.0 GPA. So it is a 2.0 that students need to uh, maintain to retain their merit scholarships. So I apologize for the confusion on that. Um, the next question is, um, you know, for international students, will we have, will they have to submit financial aid information outside of the first year? No, international students do the CSS profile once and that's all we require. But also the financial aid will not change. The financial aid, regardless of what the um, family situation is, remains the same for the four years. Um, and, and if I know uh, we've um, obviously been very sensitive to families, if they, uh, their family's financial situation changes while they're a student here, um, there is an appeals process for that. So um, just like there's been a lot of turmoil this year with COVID, um, I think we've been very sensitive to families and, and you know, adjusting financial aid awards where needed um, to make sure that HWS is still affordable. Um, and they can graduate from here. Um, so the next question is, and I'm actually not sure, uh, what is the hourly rate for work study? It's minimum wage, but I'm not sure what the minimum wage is here in New York State. I don't either, my goodness. I'm I, not sure, but it is minimum wage. But if you work for one of the, um, so on campus, we have so many different eateries. Um, so if you, if you are actually working in dining services, the uh it's it's high it's a higher rate uh so and it's actually on our website it is and i just don't recall the the exact number i apologize i think it's i think it's 1250 um but if you do work in dining services as beth was saying um that is a the highest paying job on campus um it is definitely not the most glamorous job but it's uh it you know i had i think four or five different jobs at times when I was here as a student. Um, and I actually signed my paycheck over to um, my tuition bills. So that was the deal I made with my parents. So um, my friends my friends had it as spending money, as Beth says, but um, I signed it right over there. Um, so unfortunately, uh, you know, it is minimum wage, but, um, you know, students also have, have gotten jobs in local um, restaurants or wineries um, or Monaco's the coffee shop, they've gotten jobs there. So you know, there is the possibility to have a job off campus, um, but international students are all able to work on campus um, through their F-1 visa. So they are able to earn a paycheck um, while they're here. Um, and I know uh, parent asked for the parent loan information. I'm gonna be um, looking for that information to put a link in the in the website, but are yeah, there any other- Resource center, Sue, would be great. Perfect, all right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that. Um, are there any other questions that, that we can we can help um, all of you with? Let me just see. All right, I'm putting the putting the link to the loan resource center in there so you can. Um, and that again um, also includes the appeal form. Um, yep, and I put the copy a link to the appeal form um, in the chat as well. So, um, but that where well, the link that I just put in is for the parent loan um, information. So it's loan loan resource center. Um, but are there any other questions that, that Beth or I can help you with uh, tonight? Uh, so do we have connections to paid internships um, is a question. Um, that is not something that actually goes through our financial aid office. That is something um, that every single student here that goes through our career services pathways program is actually guaranteed. Um, we guarantee students um, either research or an internship uh, during their four years here. A lot of students have two experiences that they have, um, but we guarantee you to help fund um, at least one uh, during their four years um, if it's an underpaid or unpaid experience. So let's be clear, if they have an internship with JP Morgan in New York City, 
um, which is paying them $10,000 for the summer, we're not going to be chipping in um, some of our resources uh, for that because it's obviously a paid internship. But if it's an underpaid or unpaid experience, uh, we do do that. Uh, my senior intern last year, she was able to get a fantastic internship um, in Washington, DC in the legal field and through our career services grant, um, she was able to pay for housing and transportation when she was down there. So it made it possible for her um, to do that. We have international internships that we funded. So there's a lot of different ways and students can start that process as early as their first semester here, um, their first year. So, but we do um, have connections to paid internships. And if it's an underpaid or unpaid experience, we actually um, will support that as well. And that's for both international students and domestic students. And again, through our career services office, which you really should take a look at because that's what it's all about is the outcome. And it's, we're set, it's incredible. It's incredible what our, our kids um, do and when they leave here and the opportunities that they have. So, but are there any, we probably have time for, for one more question. Are there any more questions that, that any of you have? Really a pleasure. Um, being with you tonight and again, congratulations. It's, it's, uh, it's huge. And we would love to, just so everybody knows, um, cause I know there's always confusion. We are open as of April 1st, New York state is no longer requiring um, any visitor from outside of New York state to quarantine. Um, we are fully open for visitors. We do those uh, COVID safe, so they're socially distanced. We have tours um, that are one-on-one. -on -one, so one family with one tour guide we also have enhanced visits for admitted students where um, those are on Mondays and Wednesdays, I believe. And that's where you do a tour and you can meet with a current student, uh, faculty or staff member, if you'd like. Um, we have visits Monday through Saturday. We're working on um, admitted student days. Um, we're just working on those dates um, since things are opening up and, and um, we're in a really good situation here in terms of the low number of COVID cases uh, in the area and obviously on campus. Um, but we would absolutely love to host all of you here in person. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to contact our admissions office. Um, and if you have questions about uh, your, your specific financial award, uh, the first link that I put into the chat um, is a page where you can um, actually sign up for a individual appointment. I'm putting it in again. Um, but thank you very much for joining us tonight and uh, best of luck. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. We hope to see you here in August.